it's a bit enlarged. Oh, just a second. Yes, perfect. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to present uh, my presentation on LND Finance Holdings. Um, LND Finance Holding is a diversified NBFC where it has its uh, hands on retail, housing, and mutual funds, and asset management, and other financial products. And their vision is to be top class digitally enabled retail finance and moving from product focused to customer focused approach. Let's get into the details. Going to formation and background, uh, LND Finance Holdings is inco incorporated in 1994, and LND is uh, its parent company. And all of the finance related activities of the LND Group are held with uh, LND Finance Holdings. It operates in retail and wholesale. Home finance and infrastructure finance, some other loans. Mr. S. N. Subramaniam, he's the one who is recently appointed as the director and chairperson of LNT Finance Holdings, and he's also the CEO of LNT. You look at the some of their uh, milestones. You can see here in 2007. LND Infra Finance. Uh, it started LNT Infrastructure Finance and the Commercial Vehicle Finance. And 2008 started microfinance. And in 2010, it entered into mutual fund. And in 2011, it was listed in stock exchange. And later on, it entered into two wheeler finance and housing finance. And in 2017, uh, it came up with the LND Finance Holding 2.0, a redefined strategy for its, for its uh, business verticals. And later, it had got a AAA rating from Crisil. There are there happened some mergers and demergers in the meantime, and it, right now it has a vision of Laksha 2026 to become a fintech-enabled financing company. Let's look into the subsidiaries. As of uh, March 2022, 20, the it has eight subsidiaries and. In 2021, board has de decided to sell its uh, stake in investment management, LND Investment Management Limited to HSBC. And uh, uh, to date, uh, the deal is closed with around 3,484 crores. The company said in its release recently. And if you look at the subsidiaries, it has a uh, LND Finance Limited, Infra Credit, Investment Management. And investment partners and trustee limited mutual funds, financial consultants, and other holdings. It has also 26% of its share in Grameen Capital India Private Limited, acting as its associate company. Coming to promoter and board, uh, if you look at their share holding pattern, it has 66.26% of their shares are held with. Promoters. Here, the promoter is none other than the LNT Limited. Generally, this LNT Limited is not typically promoter driven company, rather, it is a board driven company where most of its uh, shareholding is held with top DIS and FIS. Like from the over the years, if we see LIC and UTI acting as a major portfolio investors. Generally, the name came from the two Danish engineers who are refugees to India, and then they started the company, and their name still holds the company. Uh, if you look into the board of directors, Mr. S. N. Subramaniam is the chief executive director and chairperson, and he was appointed recently in 2022. He is not only the chief uh, chairman and um, Executive Director, he is also the CEO of uh, LNT Limited. And coming to Dinan Dubashi, he is the Managing Director and CEO of uh, LNT Finance Holdings. 
and there are the independent directors everyone uh, uh, the board has decent qualifications and uh, has a lot of experience in dealing with the company as it is a board driven company the directors and board of directors plays a key role and there is one nominee director who was appointed by asian infrastructure where uh, asian infrastructure is uh, invested nearly 100 millions uh, in lnt finance holdings uh, to fund a project so he was appointed by them as a nominee director we we'll look into the business of lnt finance holdings they were mainly into rural finance housing finance and wholesale finance it is their lending business and investment management and asset management as their non lending businesses so if we look before 2017 uh, it has 20 plus product lines where it gradually transferred into focused finance finance now we look into it how it was transform transformed to uh, fo uh, focused finance into a particular segment and we also look what is the necessity why it was transferred and why it is shifting strategically tra these are the product lines before 2017 it has into various verticals in line with the right structure strategy over the last 7 years it has merged its one five five entities and led to the reduction of number of lending entities from 7 to 2 in order to reduce various corporate government hurdles and simplification of corporate structure along with enhanced government and controls and later in 2016 it came up with uh, lnt finance holding 2.0 where its main target is to achieve top quartile roe of around 18 to 20% and in order to do this management uh, restructure the business by winding out loss making and inefficient business segments and shifting capital to more profitable and sustainable businesses separation of this led to healthy roi and low roi business into core focused businesses and high roi sorry high roi businesses into core and focused portfolios and low roi into non core and defocused segments so to ensure robust growth in the focused book continuously running down the defocused book and also it came up with trimming some of their workforces to eliminate unproductive employees look at it as a part of its 2.0 version it has mainly focused on rural housing and wholesale where it involves farm equipment two wheeler and microfinance home loans and real estate finance infra infra finance and structured corporate loans and supply chain finance and in defocused book we can see commercial vehicles leases cars and mid market personal vehicle loans and all those let's look into it if they achieve for what they are looking for uh, lnt finance holding 2.0 we see from financial 16 to financial 19 uh, they can significantly reduce their burden on wholesale finance and increase their contribution from retail businesses in terms of p income and in in terms of asset mix the rural plus housing contribute around 52% of their portfolio as compared to 32% before um this is a rural and housing finance where it increased to rural finance increased 26% and housing also increased to 26% so we can say that they are moving according to their targets and also as we discussed earlier uh, they, they aim for a good roi of 18 to 20% was achieved in financial year in 19 and later it started another target of laksha 2026 in 2021 the main motive is to become a retail finance of 80% of the book should be from retail finance and the growth must be aimed at 25% cgr 
and their asset quality must be within 3% of uh, of uh, gross non performing assets and one within 1% 1 of net assets and return on assets their aim is to be between 2.8 to 3% and also as part of laksha 2026 uh, they are aiming to use fintech in a large scale and a run down to wholesale book run down and decrease the wholesale book and expand to retail finance completely of a, about 8 per, 80% of total book and also before they are like majorly and product based segment to now they are ship, trying to shift to customer focused and they have some digital strategies like uh, they introduced their app planet app if we look where they are in the present quarter the recent quarter uh, they aimed for 80 percent of their book mix from retail finance and 64 percent right now they are 64 percent of their overall portfolio is re from retail finance and continued scale up of consumer loans they also partnered with various e-aggregator by offering seamless tech integration from the past if we compare year on year and quarter on quarter you can see how the segment is before total finance was about 14 percent and now it expanded to 20 percent on year on year basis whereas farmer finance 13 to 14 and urban finance from 22 to 29 even in from quarter on quarter comparisons it has a decent growth so coming to wholesale focus uh, before their focus was to reduce to defocus a book and in laksha part of 2026 they want to completely reduce the wholesale book which involves infra and real estate financing they want to completely focus on retail financing so they accelerated the reduction of wholesale book and the portfolio reduced sharply to 31,000 10 crores and quarter on year on year comparison it is down by 24 percent if you look at actually what they're doing to reduce their wholesale book they are doing their repayments and sell down of loans providing provisions uh, for their wholesale loan book which could adequately cover any downside risks here we can see their infrastructure finance book and real estate book over the past quarters they are reducing according to laksha 2026 And they also reduced gross stress from 6.69 in quarter Q3 FI 2022 to 4.21%. It also proposed merger of its subsidiary lending entities, LND Investment Capital Limited and LND Finance Holding, and it is subject to approvals. Uh, they remain aim for this merger is to be create a single lending entity providing superior operational efficiencies. And they are also aiming for digital backbone fintech scale up uh, by using data analytics across the life cycle and planet app sourcing and servicing franchises to uh, to attract more customers they are sourcing uh, small franchises in unpenetrated areas also customer retention strategy and penetrate in untapped customer potential they are also well maintained in esg norms they retain a rating from and adopting green power across branches and 10% 10, 10 reduction in carbon emissions on a year on year basis and also enduring robust governance mechanism through accountability. If you look at their lending and spending, asset mix and liability mix. So here from the rural part of finance they are aiming 20 uh, they have 20 percent of their book and farmer finance 14 percent and urban finance 29 percent for them where they want to increase this section to 80 percent and they want to uh, reduce this real estate and infra and sme into less than 10 percent that is the actual lecture 2026 
If we look at their liability mix, they have 48% from bank loan and 40% from uh, non conventional debentures and some other forms of lending borrowings here. Let's look at the management commentary. Um, projected India GDP to 7.3% in FI2023. They are expecting a slowly increase in economic activity. And they are maintaining enhanced liquidity in order uh, for future problems. And their main aim is to become largest lending segment surprising the wholesale book uh, can you hear me yes surendra we can hear you okay yeah uh, there is some disturbance for me that's why i asked no no okay. is, we can hear you fine continue LND Finance Holding has a strategy to retain good customers. They introduced a product namely Kisan Suvida, where they are able to uh, contribute uh, loans 25% from the scheme, Kisan Suvida. So the management commented on this, like uh, it is um, the one which is used to retain their good customers. And they, they have witnessed some degrowth in two-wheeler finance due to drop in domestic sales and increasing fuel, work from home things. And coming ahead, they want to focus on unpenetrated areas and new geographies. They're also made, uh, right now they have a collection efficiency of 96 to 99% and they want to maintain it at 99% levels. Uh, coming to Ireland FS crisis. So before, as we discussed, it has much of its hands in infrastructure finance. So the default occurred in LND, uh, Ireland FS, whereas LND Finance Holding has its exposure in one of the SPVs of Ireland FS, where uh, the exposure is 1800 crores. It is in the form of four annuity projects, operate, out of which three are operational, and one COD has been applied, and two toll road projects, where uh, these exposures are backed by government guarantees at that time and toll road projects are secured through collection of toll based on the increasing traffic in the roads. They also cash, have cash flows of all projects are secured through watertight ECRO accounts. After all, uh, they have sustained it without any further infusion from the promoter. We look at the numbers in the same period of time, we can see their AUM has slight impact, though it has back on track going ahead. And NPAs and ROEs are within the threshold. No much significant up and down moves. They have risk management architecture where uh, they have integrated multi multidisciplinary expertise and differentiated funding norms, portfolio governance, and parameters underwritings, proper geographic selections, and maintaining quality portfolio, etc. They also have risk guardrails, early warning signals, and macro prudential provisions, and some risk based thresholds they are maintaining in order to have risk mitigation. And coming to forensic analysis. As LNT Group is its promoter, it has uh, other holdings in uh, other uh, some of its subsidiaries. So the promoter skin in the game is technically less than 50%. Though it is the main promoter, it is, I think it is not much concerning factor. If you look at the related party transactions, uh, it has some intercorporate deposits disbursed to subsidiaries, which is around 2060 crores. Oh, we need to look into it once again and also the company in terms of rent and maintenance it paid uh, 0.29 crores to one of the promoter related companies though the promoter is lnt group so we can consider it as a subsidiary thing and in the auditor opinion auditor mentioned that uh, the company has granted loans to it are advances in the nature of to promoters and related parties 
though I didn't find any exact uh, transaction in their RPTs. And once again, we need to look into it. Coming to order quality and opinion and compensation, uh, their orders are uh, Mr. Kimji Kunveri and Ako LLP. I didn't find much information about this, so I had added it in the checklist to watch later. Overall, their four and six scores to date seventy eight point three three percent. Looking into the key metrics. AUM kept on increasing. Uh, recently, there, there is a small slight dip, uh, which is around 1,000 crores. And yield, are, yield on AUM, uh, they have good provision coverage ratio. As we discussed, they want to reduce their uh, wholesale book. So they are providing provisions for that in order to reduce the down, downside risks. So their provisions are above 50% so all the time period. The cost of funding stood at optimized levels. If we look at their NPS and written on assets and written on equity, gradually the NPS are uh, slowing down or uh, getting down, which is a good sign. And in terms of ROI and ROA, uh, they had a uh, dip in their ratios because of their sale of their mutual fund. Uh, thing to HSBC, they added some of their uh, to uh, balance to their assets. So I think uh, that is the reason of, for this uh, slight dip. Though it required recovered in uh, recent quarter. We look at the peer comparison. This LND Finance Holdings is completely a turnaround case. So. Before it was into the finance, uh, infra, infra finance and real estate finance, and then commercial vehicle finance, where slowly it was moving towards the retail finance and focus towards rural finance and all. So I took uh, Bajaj Finance as a peer in terms of diversified NBFC and MM Finance and Sriram Finance as other uh, one of their peers. So as we all know, Bajaj Finance has good numbers. And compared to the other two peers, LND Finance Holdings uh, stood at a good position. The ROI and in terms of ROI and ROA. Yeah, uh, as this is a turnaround story, very slowly it is getting into the retail finance. So we need to wait for further more quarters so that we can compare with the uh, retail finance lending NBFCs in order to get good uh, good opinion. We look at the differentiation. It is a board driven company and uh, it is shifting its business strategically. And it has achievable targets. Like if we see in 2017, it's 2.0 version, which is achieved by 2019. And now it was working towards 2026 which is also achievable looking into the present uh, up to now what they did. And as we discussed, they have high customer retention products through Kisan Suvida concept. Um, if we look at their advantage, uh, they have a market share uh, in tractors. They have 15% of their market share, which, which is the uh, which should get first rank among the competitors. And in two wheelers, it has 11% market share. And in micro loans, it has 5.7 market share, which is a good thing where they can expand further as they are looking into expand into retail finance. These are the key things they are focusing. And in terms of long term ratings, it has retained all of uh, from all four rating agencies as AAA rating. Future outlook. Yeah, um, as we discussed, their Laksha 2026 is target are well ahead of time. And they are also trying to uh, achieve 90 to 10 retail wholesale book by FI24. And it is fully positioned to transform itself to retail oriented lending. And one of the key concerns is as their 27% of their book is from rural financing. And rural finance is unparalleled growth opportunities because of their rainfall sometimes during some seasons and varying de demand of the crops from the rural. 
Also, 40% of their borrowings is through NCDs, which has always a threat from the tax implications which we discussed in the last presentation. So with this, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you. Wow, very good presentation, Surendra. Thank you. Uh, I don't have many questions. Maybe Nirvan, you have some. Yeah, yeah I have a lot to discuss. So pardon me, guys. Uh, uh, Surendra, yeah. thanks. Great, great presentation uh, as as usual. Uh, very nice job. And I just like I said for Mayank, I think you add your personal touch to this by including some slides which you feel are important for the story. So good job on that. Yeah. Uh, one question I have, Surendra, is I think one piece of the story you missed is what mm -hmm. was the contribution of mutual funds and uh, the other non-lending business to revenue, say, five years ago, and what is the contribution now? So because one of the reasons you said ROE has collapsed is because they sold some of their non-lending businesses, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that will be one important thing for you to capture because maybe earlier they were uh, making good ROEs because of uh, uh, because of non-lending, right? So, yeah. So if you have anything, uh, did I miss something? Like, did you present this, uh, Mister? Uh, yeah, before like uh, their invest from their investment management uh, in FI sixteen, they have a twenty eight percent. Um, and they they said that by FI twenty nineteen, uh, they achieved their uh, 2.0 targets uh, by the time i captured uh, it was 215% okay so they the had a target of reducing the non lending component is it yeah they have uh, not exact like uh, they have segregated some of their business into focused and defocus out okay. of which uh, this went into the defocused uh, thing okay okay so uh but in your defocused i don't see investment anywhere no yeah um I, I need to look into it yeah this you need to look into surendra because normally such a lucrative business now see mutual funds and mm -hmm. all the, you understand this is fee income right so basically yeah. you don't need to raise any funds give a loan then earn interest on it you will earn it earn interest you will earn money through commissions right in insurance business if you're selling uh, any kind of mutual funds etc right so why would they have a target to reduce that? I think this is one aspect that you need to sort of prepare one slide on, basically to understand uh, what was the contribution of this business earlier? Uh, what was the target under LTFH 2.0? Did they achieve it by FI19? And what is the current status? And uh, for Vision 2026, do they have any target on this? Okay. So one one this entire aspect of the non-lending business needs to be captured. And most, uh, uh, like uh, I searched for uh, actually some reasons, uh, I didn't find exact thing, but they are saying they don't have right to win in some of their segments. That's why they are doing. Then capture but, that. That's a very yeah, important yeah. comment, Surendra, because mm -hmm. that shows probably that can mean either of two things. Okay, like that shows that a company is keenly aware of what what are the segments it needs to get out of right yeah. and it is taking the right decisions or it means that company is taking decision after decision but they are not working if you notice uh, can you uh, share your screen uh, on on screener uh, surendra once i wanted to show everybody uh, they have announced the strategy of 2.0 etc from 2016 right and uh, you are saying that they have achieved most of their targets, but the market has derated them uh, mercilessly. So okay. they were at uh, 4.5 price to book at around, I think, uh, you know, in 2016. We can just open the screener page. Can you see? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can see. Yeah, just come to the graph and select price to book from more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go to 10 years. See, I think they started talking about LNT 2.0 sometime during like 2016. 17, yeah. So, exactly. so markets loved all that talk. The market yeah. took it to 5x, five, five times price to book, right? Look yeah. at the derating since then. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. the story that you are presenting it seems like they are hitting target after target but market doesn't seem to agree with that plus in your own slide ROEs have been dismal very poor performance on ROEs and ROEs right over yeah. the last 4 5 years last, yeah. 4 4 years exactly yeah so clearly like they have planned something but it has not worked out uh, neither has it worked out in uh, in terms of results and nor has market appreciated any of it right so yeah. we need yeah, to as, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. as i captured these things from the previous quarterly presentation presentations in 1920 those years uh, mm -hmm. they are clearly saying that uh, they are in track and they are getting the numbers as planned uh, uh, before so, so that's my suggestion that. surendra so uh, allow me to share my screen just for one minute what I'll yeah. do is I'll take you guys back to how you grow capital is presenting what it wants to do. Yeah. And I just want to uh, want you to capture a couple of slides in this format. Just a second. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Surendra, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. So I want to take you to this slide, okay? So this is the, just like l &T Finance has, has a vision 2026, Yugro has mm -hmm. a vision 25, okay? So see here, they clearly lay out this vision in terms of all the metrics. They want to hit 20,000 AUM, off book AUM should be 50%. They want to hit an ROE of 18%, uh, okay? So this is, this is how they are capturing it. And this is the current status, yeah? So I would request you to prepare uh, two slides, or if you can find a way to combine it in one slide also, I'm fine. Prepare one for their LNTFH 2.0, where in, in 2016, what were they saying? What will they achieve in 2019 across whatever parameters they spoke about, right? So they must have spoken about AUM, percentage retail, how much they want to reduce wholesale, how much they want to go up on retail, if they gave any numbers for ROE, et cetera. Yeah? So just yeah. capture what the target was and FI19, what they actually achieved against it. And similarly, uh, capture what their target is for Vision 2026 and where they are right now. Okay. Okay. So these, these two slides should give a lot of clarity to us that management is doing a lot of things from what you've shown us in the presentation. Management is not shy of acting, right? It's constantly acting, merging businesses, selling off uh, mutual funds, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> merging. Yeah, demons. yeah. So, so clearly this is not a group which is trying to, you know, tread cautiously, not changing. They are very quick to change things, right? But uh, whether it's working or not, those two slides will tell the entire story, right? We anyway know from the ROE that things are not working in terms of profitability, but maybe there is another reason for that, yeah, which will correct in the next three years from 2023 to 2026. But are they hitting their uh, other targets that they had set out to hit, right? So yeah. I, I think these are the main thing there. And any insight on why their AUM has decreased in FI23 from FI22? It has decreased by some one, one two thousand crores. Uh, did you? Uh, did you notice yeah, it? Or I, I think um, it was nine months. So, no, but it's not... AUM is not nothing to do with nine months. No, or AUM is okay. uh, balance sheet figure. So, uh, it sometimes, uh, sometimes they are giving the numbers uh, as uh, like average AUM. Sometimes they are giving two date uh, on date AUM. Uh, so, okay. I captured uh, this number from their presentation. Okay, so, I am I am capturing this as a point to note, Surendra. Can you get back on an answer on this? Yeah, maybe you know wherever it's average and just make it the same, and just let us know if there is degrowth. If the do these guys do con calls? Yeah, yeah. If there is a con call, there'll be an answer to this because every finance company is growing its book right right now yeah. because mm -hmm. credit cycle is very strong. On an average, fifteen percent YOY growth is there, but these guys are degrowing. So what is the reason, right? Okay. Let's try to capture that. I'm writing it in, in the further investigation part. And one more thing, Gaurav, I don't know if you noticed uh, uh, what Surendra presented is they have the highest share of tractor financing, right? Surendra, 15% market share. Yeah, 15%. So, yeah. yeah, go ahead. You uh, have it was questions? like, uh, it was ahead of uh, just 100, 100 num in hundreds of the numbers from rank two to rank one. 
Okay, and rank two is. Do you know who rank two is? Uh, I, I didn't get it. Uh, okay. They just right. mentioned this statement in their annual report. I read okay, it. okay, okay. So I am very surprised that Mahindra is not number one in tractor finance. So that is one point that I have noted down. So maybe you know, uh, one uh, who covered Mahindra, uh, Rishikesh covered Mahindra, right? Rishikesh, can you yeah. uh, can you dig out Mahindra's tractor finance market share? And uh, okay, I will try. Yeah, yeah, and let us know on the WhatsApp group. So that uh, we can do a cross check on this, yeah. Because if LNT is actually number one in tractor finance, in spite of MNM being there, that is a very good sign to me. At least in one segment, uh, you know, LNT is showing really, really good outperformance, right? So that will be interesting. Yeah, more or less, this is it. Apart from that, there are some small feedback and further investigations, which I'll capture in the sheet and send across. Uh, sorry. Uh, Good, good presentation. Loved, uh, loved listening to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So one question, Irvan, since we are almost at 746. Yeah. Should we?